Hello, I'm Tony from Vonner's Piano Centre and this is my comparison video for three middle of the range digital pianos. We have the Yamaha CLP745, the Casio GP310 and over here we have the Kawai CA59. So when you're choosing a digital piano, it's always great to actually get your hands on them yourself. If you come to any of Bonner's piano stores, you can see all three of these models next to each other and compare them just to make sure you're buying the right piano for your needs. But the purpose of this video is to just give you a little flavor of, of how they sound. I'm gonna talk about a few of the basic features. I have made individual videos on each of these pianos, which you'll find on our YouTube channel. So if you want more in-depth demonstrations, then please take a look at some of our other videos. So let's get on with the uh, demonstration. So what I'm going to do here is first of all, I'm just going to play the first sound that comes on when you switch on each of the pianos. So this is what I call one of the core piano sounds. Now, in olden days, there only ever used to be one main piano sound with a few variations on that same piano tone. But nowadays, the manufacturers are actually recording the sounds of lots of different pianos and putting them inside the uh, digital pianos to enable you to play a different piano for different styles of music. So we're going to start off, like I say, with the very first core piano sound. And on the Yamaha, that is the sound of the CFX Concert Grand. On the Casio, it's the sound of the Berlin Grand, which I suspect is the uh, sound of a Bechstein piano. And on the Kawai, it's the sound of the SK Concert concert grand. So first of all, let's just take a listen to a very short piece. I'm going to play the same piece on all three pianos to give them a fair representation, uh, just to give you an idea of, of how they sound. So I'm sure you can begin to hear the difference in tone between the three different manufacturers' instruments. Now, as I've already said, each manufacturer usually samples or records the sound of different grand pianos and puts them inside their digital instruments. And this means that you then have a selection of completely different pianos to play for different styles of music. So as well as the CFX Concert Grand on the Yamaha, they also offer the sound of the Bosendorfer piano, which is a really beautiful, sweet and delicate piano sound. Casio offers the sound of the Vienna Grand, which I also suspect is a Bosendorfer sound. And then Kawai offers the sound of their EX Concert Grand, which has a very different tonal quality to the standard Shigeru Concert Grand, which is the first sound that you get when you switch the CA59 on. So let's take a listen to those three different piano sounds. Again, I'm gonna play a similar piece of music on all three pianos so that it gives you a fair comparison of the tone of each instrument.
So here we are looking at the control panel for the CLP745 and as you'll see there are dedicated buttons for both the CFX Grand and the Bosendorfer but there are more acoustic piano voices uh, that you can get to by using the left and right arrow buttons here. So if we scroll through we have the upright piano, the bright grand, mellow grand, warm grand, pop grand, jazz grand, rock grand and the honky tonk piano and in addition to that there is also the Mozart piano and the Chopin piano. So we're now looking at the control panel for the Casio GP310 and as you'll see there are three dedicated buttons for the Berlin, the Hamburg and the Vienna Grand pianos and then you can use the up and down arrows to scroll through different variations on these so we have Berlin Grand Mellow, Berlin Grand Bright and we have similar variations for the Hamburg and for the Vienna pianos and if you carry on scrolling down then you'll have a modern grand piano, grand piano rock and grand piano jazz. Okay so we're looking at the control panel for the CA59 here so we can just scroll left and right through different piano voices so the first one that you see when you switch the instrument on is the SK Concert Grand, we can scroll to the right we get the EX Concert Grand, the SK5 Grand Piano, then we have a jazz piano, a warm grand, a warm grand 2, upright piano, standard grand, pop grand, pop grand 2, boogie piano, modern piano. So now we've heard two of the piano tones on each instrument, what I'm going to do now is I've just selected a third sound from each instrument um, and I'm going to play a different piece of music on each instrument uh, just to give you an idea of how versatile they are. So on the Yamaha I've actually selected the sound of the upright piano and if you just take a listen it's very very slightly detuned as well like many of our own home family upright pianos used to be um, but it's a very authentic sound and it's a really nice sound and again suitable for completely different styles of music to the CFX and Bosendorfer Concert Grand. Now on the Casio instrument as my third piano sound I've chosen the sound of the Hamburg Grand which I strongly suspect is the sound of a Steinway piano but it's a nice big bold piano sound um, and I hope I've selected a piece of music that does this kind of piano tone justice so have a listen to this. So the third piano sound that I've selected on the Kawai CA59 is the sound of the SK5 Grand Piano and that's a shorter Grand Piano than the Concert Grands, um, we call it a Studio Grand Piano so it's got a little less bass response because uh, the strings are actually shorter on this piano but it is nonetheless a really nice piano sound um, and I've selected a different piece of music, a more contemporary piece of music but still very pretty which I think suits the sound of the SK5 really well.
So anyone that's watched any of my previous demonstration videos will know how important it is that when you're choosing a digital piano, you don't just do it based on the sound, but it's actually, you need to take into consideration the type of keyboard and the feel of the keyboard. That's so, so important. Now, um, recently, that is where the big uh, steps forwards have been made um, in terms of, of technology has been in the keyboard part of the digital pianos because in previous models, maybe from 15, 20 years ago, they had plastic keyboards with metal weights in them to try and give the sort of resistance of a piano, but they really didn't feel, they didn't, you didn't quite have the, um, the, you couldn't put the expression into your playing that you can do with the more recent instruments. So what I have here, I have two examples of the types of keyboards that are used in the Casio and the Kawai models. Now, I haven't been able to obtain um, a sample of the keyboard that's inside the Yamaha model, but let's talk about the Yamaha first of all, because it uses their new Grand Touch S keyboard action, and it has wooden keys. Um, now, I have a picture here which I, I suspect is the kind of the type of keyboard that is inside uh, this. It may not be the exact representation, um, but like I say, I haven't been able to get hold of, a, of the exact picture or even a, a replica model like I have from the other manufacturers. But it's a nice feeling keyboard. It uses um, a, a central core made of synthetic materials, I suspect plastics uh, or perhaps some metal. But then there are wooden sort of inserts which are on the on the outside of the keys, um, which kind of give it, it's sort of a hybrid really between a, a wood and a, and a plastic keyboard action. But it does feel very, very nice to play. Um, so like I've said, I would always in, encourage you to come into one of our stores and actually try the pianos for yourself. There, if we take a look at the Casio keyboard, it uses um, what, you, if you know anything about grand pianos, then you'll know that the keys are nice and long on a grand piano. They kind of disappear inside the piano, um, out, out of sight. It's not just the white piece here that you see at the front, the key runs all the way through. And what that means is that there's a, a little pin in the middle, I call it a balance pin, and when you press the end of the key. It's sort of giving you this kind of seesaw effect, um, but it gives you a lot of control over the, over the sound and over your, the expressiveness of your playing. So Casio have opted for a really nice long wooden key. In fact, this uh, particular keyboard was made in collaboration with Beckstein. So a very, very well-regarded German piano manufacturer. Casio have teamed up with them to help them manufacture a really, really great feeling keyboard. Um, we call this a hybrid really because it's so close to the uh, piano key and kind of action mechanism that you would find in a grand piano that Casio uh, class their pianos as, as grand hybrid pianos. So um, I, I think they're worthy of that title, to be honest with you, because that key mechanism is excellent. You can see there's even a little hammer there. Now, with the Casio, if you lift up the lid, you can actually see the hammers moving inside the instrument. So it's really worth coming to try these pianos out for yourself because there is a very, very big difference. If you, if you listen to the sound, the piano sound of them all, they all sound very, very nice, but the difference is in the, is in the touch. So finally, if we take a look at the Kawai keyboard, this uses Kawai's Grand Feel Compact. Now, as you'll see again, it has a nice long wooden key. It's not as long as the Casio key, um, but it still has the balance pin and the distance from the front of the key to the balance pin is almost identical to that of the Casio. It's just the piece of wood from the balance pin onwards is, is shorter. It has hammers which kind of come up in reverse to, to the key. So compared with the Casio hammer which uh, follows the format of a traditional grand piano. So. I must say the Kawhi feels good too. They all feel nice to play. They're all very different, but they all feel nice to play. Um, so really it's a case of you choosing the one that, that you feel most comfortable with. Um, the Kawhi mechanism, this, is, this has been used on, uh, this is the, I think the second range of pianos Kawhi have used this action on. This is the Grand Feel Compact. They also, in their higher range models, so the CA 79 and the CA 99, they use the Grand Feel 3 keyboard action, which has longer keys than this. Looks very similar, but with, with even longer keys. So the longer the key, the more control you've got over your, over your playing. 
So if you're still confused about which is the right digital piano for you, then maybe you've got to consider some other features. So perhaps uh, it's a very, very important consideration, but the, the cabinet design and the, and the range of color options that are available for each model may help you make your mind up. So if we start with the Kawai models, um, the CA59 is available in three different color options. You have the one that I have here, which is the uh, satin black. There is also a satin white finish, and there is also a satin rosewood. So three color options with a Kawai. With the Casio GP310, there are two options. We have the satin black, which you see here, and there is also a satin white option as well. Now, when it comes to cabinet options, Yamaha are the real winners here because they actually have six color options, I believe. Let's just, just check. So we have here the rosewood finish. They also do a satin black, which they call black walnut. There is the satin white finish. There's a white ash finish. Um, and there is also a dark walnut finish. Um, so those are the five satin finishes, but on top of that, Yamaha also offers a CLP 745 in the really beautiful high gloss polished ebony finish. So that's that shiny black finish, piano black that you'll see on, on grand pianos um, and really looks absolutely beautiful. So Yamaha offer a really great range of color options. And in this price range, they are the only company to offer the high gloss polished ebony. You do pay a few hundred pounds extra for that particular finish, but if you particularly want that finish, then the Yamaha is definitely the piano to go for. So now I want to talk about the amplification systems in each of these pianos because obviously the, the sound output is very much reliant on the quality of the amplifiers and the speaker system. And I was really surprised to find out when I was checking the specifications that all three of these pianos have a total output power of 100 watts. So that's pretty powerful. Uh, if you check the output power of some of your hi-fi systems, you'll be quite surprised at quite how small they are. So 100 watt total output power is really quite loud. Um, but what it does mean that even when you're at low volume, you get a nice, rich, full sound. Um, also, all three of the instruments have a four speaker system. So they've got four speakers placed at various points within the cabinet to give a, a good surround type sound experience when you're sitting right in front of the, the piano. So from an amplification point of view, they are all very, very similar. So what I thought I would do now is actually just play each of the pianos uh, using the microphones on the camera, which is pretty equal distance from each one of the instruments, just so you can hear how they sound in the ambience of the room that I'm in. So in all three of those recordings, the volume controls for each instrument were up at about three quarters, where, which is where I would imagine most people would set them for use at home. So my final comparison between the three different models uh, is Bluetooth. Now, in recent years, this has become more and more important to some people because um, there are so many music making apps available. Now, um, all three models have USB, so you can just grab a USB cable um, and you can plug the, the uh, pianos into your laptop computer. Or if you have a tablet computer, like an iPad, you can plug them into that. You'll need the Apple camera connection kit uh, to give you the USB, uh, the correct USB socket on your iPad. But you can connect all three with a cable 
into uh, a laptop or a or an iPad or an um, Android device so that you can access all the music making software that's available. But uh, more recently, manufacturers have opted to add Bluetooth connectivity, which means you can do a similar thing, but completely wirelessly. So Yamaha in the CLP745 offers uh, Bluetooth MIDI, which means that you can communicate completely wirelessly with a tablet device. Um, so if you're, perhaps you've got some music learning software, um, then you can uh, sort of interact with the software without any cables attached to the piano. Um, it also offers Bluetooth audio, so you can stream music from your, perhaps your mobile phone, through the amplification system on the CLP745. So this is one of the first instruments that Yamaha has put both types of Bluetooth, so it's both Bluetooth MIDI and Bluetooth audio in the same piano. Now, the Casio GP310 doesn't have any Bluetooth at all. So for some people that really doesn't matter because they're not really going to be using the piano for that kind of, that kind of use. Um, you, like I say, you've got a USB, so you can just plug your computer in with a USB cable, so not too much loss there. You've also got auxiliary inputs, so you could take the audio out of your headphone socket from your external device, plug it into the uh, GP310 and use the speakers. So what you don't get with the GP310 is wireless connectivity. It will still connect um, and you can still use it for recording and for music making apps, all those kinds of things, but you have to use cables rather than it being wireless with Bluetooth. Now, finally, on the uh, Kawai CA59, that also, just like the Yamaha, offers Bluetooth audio and Bluetooth MIDI. The difference being that on the CA59, the Bluetooth audio uses uh, APT-X or APT-X technology and what that means is that if you're streaming um, audio from your mobile phone um, or your tablet device through the amplification system of the CA-59, it's using this APT-X technology which is higher quality wireless streaming so you lose less quality over wireless audio than you would do with non-APT-X or APT-X, I'm not sure how they say it yet in the, uh, in the business, um, but you lose uh, less audio quality because it's got that, you, your device needs to be APT-X enabled which many of the modern mobile phones are anyway. Um, so on Bluetooth I think Kawhi probably wins from that point of view um, but really Bluetooth is something that you should only really consider to be really important um, once you've selected the right feel of keyboard and the right piano tone. So I wouldn't buy a digital piano based purely on the Bluetooth connectivity, you need to buy it based on how that piano performs for you as an instrument. So that brings me to the end of my comparison video between these three different digital pianos. Remember that if you come into one of Bonner's stores, you can actually have exactly the same experience as I've had here, where you can play all three of these pianos next to each other and compare with other instruments in their ranges and other instruments from different manufacturers. Um, so come and visit us. We have a store in Eastbourne on the south coast. We have one in Rygate in Surrey, just off of Junction 8 of the M25 motorway. And we have a store in Milton Keynes as well. So let us know in the comments which piano you like the best. Um, come into one of our stores and give it a try. Or if you want to, uh, please get in touch via email if you want some uh, buying advice on digital pianos. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in another one of my piano demonstration movies.